Okay, good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Plan Commission meeting for November 1st. Uh, before we start, I just want to make a, a brief statement about our commission. We are an appointed body. Uh, we're appointed by the mayor. We are an advisory board to the Board of Trustees. Uh, the review of our cases tonight uh, will go, uh, it actually has no binding. Uh, we, we just, we're just an approval process for the board. Uh, the final decision will remain with the board and they meet on the first Monday and Thursday of every month. So if, if anybody wants to speak tonight or wishes to get a copy of a case report uh, and, and want to be notified when that specific case goes before the board, there's a yellow sheet up there. We'll just need your name and address and we'll be glad to notify you. Uh, first order of business tonight is the uh, approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Commissioner Daxis, approve. Commissioner Berman, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. First case tonight is case 2018-40P, a special use permit at 4916 Dempster Street. Uh, 4916 through 24 Dempster, LLC, on behalf of Scott Figaro, Art Incorporated requests a special use permit for a tattoo parlor in the B3 business zoning district. And yeah, let's see, is the petitioner here tonight? Please come up. Just for the record, Dick, could you just introduce yourself and give your address? On behalf of petitioners, Richard J. Wittry, W-I-T-R-Y, 7835 Nile Center Road. Thank you. And is the, the notice in order? Notice is proper and correct. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, good yes. evening, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, on behalf of the petitioners, I am here this evening and I will give you a brief overview of what the presentation of Mr. Meek and Mr. Frigo will be tonight. Uh, they will present a more detailed description of what they hope to, will be a concurrence from this board to staff's recommendation to grant the special use permit. I wish to make four points. First and foremost, as we develop this presentation, I want you to think of this application as one for an art studio. For that, it was what Scott Frigo is. He's an artist. Now, the zoning code does not speak in terms of art studios, but that is what this application is all about, establishing an art studio at the premises. I submit that tattoo parlors were thought of, certainly in the past, as a use which was dungy and dirty. Something suitable for sailors, perhaps, but not for the general public. This is an old-fashioned view much out of date with contemporary mores. As proof of this, I would suggest, without knowing of course, that several of you may have tattoos. No hands to be shown. And if, and if my hypothesis is incorrect, then I guarantee that many of your children and grandchildren have tattoos. Look to the village's <coughs> zoning code. The village board has already indicated that a tattoo parlor is permitted in the village's B3 district, albeit with a special use. Some villages are not as enlightened. <clears throat> if I can manipulate this properly. If you look at this exhibit, you will see several municipalities permit tattoo parlors within their jurisdictions, the rounded circles. If, in fact, tattoo parlors were dungy and dirty, do you think that Libertyville, Deerfield, and Des Plaines would permit them? I suggest not. Scott's studio will be light and airy with elegant signage, not hidden in some back alley. This is a rendition of what we believe the premises will look like when all is said and finished. That's good. <coughs> My co-counsel, Mr. Meek, is showing the exhibit. And I would suggest to you that it's an elegant looking building. I think the signage is, is right there. Uh, and it's light and airy. You can look into the, uh, into the premises. Uh, David and uh, Scott Frigo will elaborate on this a little bit. Point number three, 
Scott Frigo has a stellar reputation in the tattoo community. There are several testaments to his abilities in my possession, which I can share with the commission if you like. Client conferences will be by appointment only. This is important. Client conferences will be by appointment only. No one will just walk in and get a tattoo. Again, David and Scott will elaborate on that point. Let me tell you what kind of clientele is not attracted to Scott's artwork. Misogynist, white supremacist, gangbangers, and Nazi sympathizers. Scott simply does not offer artwork to these groups, and this is known throughout the tattoo community. Who are his clientele? Some are here this evening. Raise your hands if you're here to support Scott, if you will. Thank you. Others have written in support of Scott's desire to open here in Skokie. One such client is Scott Molner, Senior Petty Officer Michael Molner, I'm sorry, Michael Molner, U.S. Coast Guard. He speaks not only of his experience with Scott, which was excellent, but also of two female military veterans, all of whom rave about Scott's abilities. Another of Scott's clients, Ms. Sarah Dertinger, who is here this evening, speaks of Scott's dedication to the business and his passion for his craft. I have seen the plans for the build out of this space and assure you that it will be first class. I think the exhibit speaks for itself. Unlike other businesses that come and go, Scott Frigo Art Inc. TBA Midwest Classic Tattoo will be, if permitted a special use permit, a vibrant contributing business to Skokie. I urge the commission to concur with staff's recommendation. Thank you very much for your attention. David. Thank you. Can I have your name for the record, please? Good evening. I'm David Meek, 513 Central Avenue, Highland Park, Illinois. You are an attorney for the I am an attorney, <coughs> attorney of record on the, the matter. And um, I want to just first start by pointing out that we have not only assembled here um, supporters, uh, folks who have been clients of Scott's, but also some of the folks on our uh, team, the development team who've helped to put together the materials in support of the special use application. Um, we've got Jack Frigo, uh, Tim Doran of Schwartz Engineering, who provided a uh, parking study uh, assessment. Uh, we've got Andrew Lines from Cohn Resnick, who did our appraisal and impact study. Um, and I think that is it for right now. Um, what I want to start with is actually Scott. Scott can speak very well to what he wants to bring to Skokie and his background, uh, his philosophy on his uh, business and how he intends to conduct his business in this location. Um, I'll just say that, remind you, this is on Dempster. This is across from the Target store. Um, this is a <coughs> long vacant space uh, in this retail center. Um, but it is appropriate for uh, what Scott wants to do, and we'll get into some more detail briefly after Scott speaks about the way that the uh, space will lay out, what his plans are for that, and they are, of course, part of your, uh, your packet. Uh, your packet does consist of um, not only the site plans and, and the uh, uh, staff report, but it has the supporting materials prepared by Mr. Lines. You also received it, the supplemental um, parking assessment that uh, Mr. Dorn presented uh, to us and a few other materials. And then Scott had circulated a uh, binder or a PDF, as, if you will, of um, additional material that elaborates on his qualifications, his background. Um, uh, uh, oh, and, and Whitney Fergasi, the other uh, artist who will be with, uh, with Scott. Whitney, where are you? If you can raise your hand. Oh, there you are, sorry. Um, she's the other tattoo artist who would be working with Scott. Um, so you, you have a lot of material, including examples of the types of artwork that Scott does, but I'll let him talk about that. So, Scott, would you please come up? Thank you. What this is, though. Yeah. Scott, before you talk, as mm -hmm. a petitioner, I need to swear you in. Raise your right hand, please. Do you affirm that the testimony you give tonight is the truth, the whole truth, not about the truth to help you? I do. Thank you. Great. Uh, good evening. I'm Scott. Uh, Scott Frigo. Um, I would do you have like. Address? Oh, uh, it's 62 South Wolf uh, Wheeling. 
Thank you. Um, I would like to become a part of the Skokie business community uh, and open up a tattoo shop. Um, I'm dedicated to safe, friendly, uh, consistent tattooing, and uh, that's what we want to bring to Skokie. Um, I graduated from Deerfield High School and then Columbia College in Chicago uh, with art and design background and uh, focus in illustration, graduated high honors. Um, and then I've been in the tattoo industry for seven years. Uh, after, after college, I apprenticed for two years under um, tattoo pioneer, women's tattoo pioneer, Jeannie Fritch, um, and founding member of the National Tattoo Association. Uh, she's in Lake Station, Indiana, and her her um, tattoo shop is called Personal Art Inc. For anyone who's interested, um, I chose Skokie because it's it's sort of a dream in how diverse the community is here. Um, and as a student of art and art history, it's inspiring to have m like a very deep pool of culture to draw to draw from. Um, I really like the opportunity to do research when I have an appointment and really get into the art history and uh, the culture and what people bring to me to collaborate with them. Um, I also chose the, the, this particular spot, 4916, because of the high visibility, the traffic on Dempster, all of that is excellent. Um, it's, it connects to Chicago with, uh, with uh, public transportation. There's good commuter access to parking and uh, so on. It's, it's a great spot. Um, my whole purpose in tattooing is to, is to be a positive impact and to, be, and to really show the ability of tattooing to be a constructive art uh, and a living art. Um, People get tattooed for all different reasons, but um, the main ones are to celebrate their culture, uh, to memorialize family, to cover up things that they're insecure about, uh, mastectomy, scars, stretch marks, burns, and so on. Um, it's, it's also to help people be, be able to be at peace with their self-image and um, be able to really have representation for who, th who they believe themselves to be and who you should know. Um, and it, it's a pleasure to work with so many different cultures, so I would really relish that opportunity. Um, I, uh, like, like Dick said, I, I only tattoo people to, to help others. Um, I don't, I won't tattoo racist, misogynistic, gang-related or otherwise hateful material on anyone. Uh, from time to time, we get asked to do things that are less than what I would like to do, and we just tell them that it's house rules to not do outlaw material, and that's basically like where we close it. Um, there's, in, in apprenticing, like your, your mentor teaches you a lot, and uh, I wouldn't, for any amount of money, compromise the ethics of my mentor and myself and like the positive culture that we're trying to build or trying to make a better culture. Um, also, yeah, as, as a rule, on, on, the, on the mention of my mentor, she, uh, she used to say that a classy tattoo artist doesn't tattoo the face or neck, um, and so I also won't be doing that. Um, as far as clients go, uh, really everyone, it's a cross-section of everyone who gets tattooed, except for children. Uh, there's no, uh, no underages, um, but corporate executives, I've tattooed corporate executives from Snap-on, um, late 70s distinguished military veterans, uh, teachers, police, firefighters, uh, athletes, healthcare professionals, people from every race and gender. Uh, is it, can I present some pictures of tattoos? Absolutely. Okay.
This is uh, this is just some lettering that I did. Um, it's a serenity prayer, and yeah, I I love lettering and making really clean tattoos. Um, and this is to provide strength for the for the wear of it. These two are. are both dream catchers. This, the one on the left, is uh, well. The dream catcher catches the catches the negative dreams, the the nightmares, and lets the light ones go through. So this is the one on the left is for her two daughters um, to inspire and to give protection to her daughters. The one on the right is um, to basically memorialize and uh, give strength to the Blackfoot people. She is a native member. Uh, this last one is a, is a lioness. And I tattooed this on the ankle of a 65-year-old woman. And she this is her first tattoo. Um, and she got it to, to start her new life because she she survived a battle with cancer and um, she wanted to present herself and represent the beautiful strong person that she is <clears throat> um, we'll be conducting a clean and safe tattoo shop to the utmost detail I'm a member of the National Tattoo Association and I've been brought up with a founding member, and and uh, she kept us she kept us the practitioners safe, and and the people who were getting the work safe, and uh, we strictly adhere to that, and we will be following all the bloodborne uh, pathogen precautions, and we'll be doing bloodborne pathogen uh, studies and certifications, whether it's through Red Cross or OSHA. Um, whichever the IDPH uh, w uh, prefers us to do, and we'll be licensed by them. I went around uh, to introduce myself to the community when we started leasing the space, and uh, just to sort of say hello and to give them a, a mission statement about so that they wouldn't have misconceptions about what I'm about there. And um, I was really happy to find that a lot of them are tattoo enthusiasts, um, and they were really happy about us uh, potentially coming uh, to their town. And um, someone chased me outside of one of the shops who was a customer who wanted to support and say that she was really excited if it was going to happen. Um, also, we got the support of O'Reilly's, the, the auto parts place that is uh, right there. And um, the, the manager, Anita, said that she was a tattoo enthusiast and that she would uh, help us with parking in any way that we needed on the west end of the O'Reilly's um, and said that she couldn't wait to be a client. Um, uh, Dick said already, but we work by appointment only, and so that way people can take time to sort of digest their idea. Um, I have time to do the proper research to provide them with something that's concise, consistent, and um, it really has foundation. Uh, and, and so I can provide them with a number of different looks for them to consider, for them to sleep on it, make sure it's the right decision for them. Um, uh, and we tattoo, the sort of house rate is, is going to be uh, around $150 an hour. Uh, that pretty much closes what I wanted to say. Um, I'm excited to become a part of this, this community. So um, I'll pass it over to uh, my team who will handle more of the special use uh, process and I'll I'm if you available. Could just stay there for a minute. I think a couple yeah, of commissioners here. have a question of you. Sure. Yeah, Clyde? right here. Please. Um, your work's phenomenal, by the way. I had a chance to look at a lot of it that was sent to us. I believe it was today. Some additional material. Thank you, sir. Um, closing time, 8 p.m. Is that pretty typical of just your site or the other sites you, you apprenticed at? Or 
Um, the personal art inc would close earlier than that. She would close around 6.30 and then uh, the current space that I work at closes at 8 p.m., 7 p.m. on Saturdays. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, what's your gut feeling on the amount of traffic, the coming and going? It's two appointments per, at least two appointments per customer, right? One, the consultation, then, then yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Then second time they come in and, and get the tattoo? Yeah, unless they want to consult. There's, uh -huh. there's a way to consult over email, too, okay. but it's best to come in. But what do you, what, what's your good feeling on the coming and go, going traffic on a regular day? Or I expect it to be busy. Um, three stations. You have your three stations, right? Yeah, yeah, three <laughs> stations. One, um, I plan on having just being a staging station mm -hmm. for it to be clean to turn over quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other two can be worked on, hopefully, consistently throughout the day to, I mean, no one wants to be exhausted when doing their tattoo, and that's also why we do appointments so we can spread them out and we're not under the gun to, to rush anything. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions of the uh, petitioner? Thank you. Is, is there anything equivalent to like medical waste or anything that winds up at the end of the day, or that? Yeah, there is. How yes. does that get disposed of? Um, we do currently at the space that I work at, we stericycle everything. So they give us a large bin um, and it's got a red bag which has a hazardous waste on it. And it's this giant indestructible bin. <laughs> and uh, we put everything in there and they collect it bi monthly. So it never sits outside in the back um, no. waiting for pickup or anything? No, it stays in the clean room. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Yes, question from Bourbon. I noticed that you live in your corporate office is Deerfield, and there is already one tattoo parlor in Deerfield. Did you decide not to open in Deerfield? Was that a conscious decision? Why Skokie? Why not Deerfield? Uh, Skokie is, well, like I said, it's, it's more diverse. Um, the community here seems uh, just to be, I mean, wider. Uh, I currently live in Wheeling. Um, and I grew up in Deerfield, but I also lived in Washington State and in Chicago, too. So I, I didn't really consider um, opening in Deerfield. And also, uh, th it's somewhat taboo to open uh, a shop on, uh, next to someone else. Um, so I, I want it to be considerate of the <coughs> space. Okay. Thank you. If you want to bring the rest of your team on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Scott, maybe you can just stay here for a minute. Sure. I just want to uh, take the opportunity to have you here and just sort of show them briefly the floor plan um, because I think it helps to understand how the space will operate. And I think actually this visual here shows you some artwork in there. Can you talk about the entry and the entry experience for clients and the view that the people from the street will have as they walk by? Oh, uh, sure. So here is the lobby area. Um, it's going to have examples of artwork uh, to give people sort of just a, a flavor of what they, what they could be looking at, some of our different artists' specialties. Um, and there will be books and art on the walls. Um, not really similar to the old style of tattooing where there would be a lot of like flash and choices like a menu to choose from <coughs> because it's all going to be uh, custom, <coughs> custom work. Um, but it's going to be a really nice, warm, bright place for people to, to uh, <coughs> consult, consult with a, a manager or artist here um, and read some books and hopefully get inspired in, in, in there. Um, no tattooing will be visible from the street because there is going to be a barrier here and here at the desk um, at a little over four feet uh, to give privacy to the tattoo stations and because uh, you wouldn't want someone interfering or ogling some tattoo work that's going on in there. Um, it stays pretty private and then there's actually a private tattoo station um, for anyone who feels more comfortable uh, in, in a situation like that, we provide that. that yeah, that's very helpful. And, and another thing about the front is that is it your intent to have some um, artwork for sale? Because you do, yeah. uh, you, you, you're, you're a painter and an illustrator, and, and I mean, you, you have a lot of artistic abilities, and you've, you've done other things that you've sold, right? 
Yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I make uh, illustrations and paintings um, that are one-offs that I would love to promote and sell, um, but it's secondary to tattooing, which is um, really my purpose. And uh, the commission should know that you, in your efforts to uh, meet with the neighbors, you actually provided a list of everybody who you've personally met with and some of their responses, and that was a part of the communication to the commission, right? Correct, yeah. I uh, met with everyone um, from the, the site of the mattress firm all the way west to uh, 94, the highway. Um, and it was unanimous, unanimously supportive for the people who I was able to meet, um, who were able to take the time to uh, talk to me for a second. And um, yeah, I asked them if they had any questions to please contact me. Excellent, okay. And one other point, um, I think you mentioned that you'll be licensed and, and the artist who's working here will be licensed by, by whom? What are your like certifications and licensing? What does that entail? It's, okay. The, the just for our own safety, the licensing is either through Red Cross or OSHA, which is the bloodborne pathogen certifications. Um, and then, additionally to that, uh, we are going to be licensed through the Illinois Department of Public Health, which is uh, which you have to be licensed by in order to have tattoo artists in your shop. Right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Let me you, ask you other questions, but probably not. Okay. Um, so, you. so um, we first of all we we concur with the um, we've reviewed the staff report and and concur with the proposed uh, positive findings of fact that are laid out in the staff report, and we concur with both the recommended and the uh, of course standard special use conditions that are set out. Um, and to that end, we have also uh, already revised the site plan with the uh, three uh, modifications that were proposed with respect to uh, bicycle parking and uh, restriping of the parking lot. Um, and uh, so, so I just wanted to make sure that we're, we're clear about that. Um, we've put up the space plan here. Um, I think it's a, uh, we've touched on the things that are probably necessary to talk about uh, in terms of how the space works and what's, what's going on inside there. Um, our uh, streetscape, as we've shown you here, uh, we've already submitted an appearance commission application for this uh, wall signage. Uh, we'll come back at a later date with uh, any proposed window signage, um, uh, but I think that the intent there is to maintain uh, light, visibility, um, and of course code compliant uh, window signage. Um, but I'm sure that Scott will develop something that's uh, really uh, special to his, his business. Um, one issue that, uh, just, just to raise, parking, although we are legally non-conforming, uh, as evidenced in the uh, staff report, um, might still be a concern to you. Uh, there are 13 parking spaces. Uh, Tim Doran did a uh, parking capacity analysis and, and looked at both available space on site and uh, in the immediate area. Um, right now, four of the 13 spaces are designated by the landlord as 15 minute because we've got a couple of uses like the dry cleaner, which can, w w should benefit from that. Um, we're going to direct uh, people to try to park uh, in other locations, whether it's the CTA or on the street. Um, CTA is proximate and, and readily, readily available, and uh, we're happy to report on the cooperation from O'Reilly to allow us to use some of their space uh, when we can. Um, so that's uh, a, a nice benefit for us, and we're, again, we're very appreciative of that. Um, so um, I, I, I could bring up other folks to talk, but I think that um, it might be better to just uh, entertain questions at this point, and, and uh, uh, if you'd like us to review the, the standards that are set forth uh, for the special use, we could. I can say that you know, we concur with um, the standards and the findings that are laid out or we concur with the findings as to the standards that are laid out in the staff report. Um, okay. But in the interest Very good. of time. At, at this point, Counselor, if, yeah. if you're finished, I will have the staff give its report to the commission. Oh, excellent. Okay. okay. And then I can have you come back up. All right. Very okay. good. Thank you. Thank you. I will have the staff come up and give its report, after which I will open the floor to anyone in the audience 
who has a question or comment on this case? Peter? Chairman, uh, I ask that the staff report be accepted into the record as written. Request, request is granted. Thank you. Uh, staff is supportive of the granting of this uh, special use permit. Uh, we've reviewed it and uh, we've given you findings of fact uh, that are positive. Uh, the petitioners have agreed to all the conditions. They've submitted the revised uh, site plan, which is shown above, which meets our requirements. The only little change would be over here, the bike rack is not the type we would have, but that will be taken care of during the building permit stage. The uh, signage that was shown, uh, staff is supportive of that. It may not even need to go to the Appearance Commission because it fits into the design of the building and uh, fits in the sign scheme that they have. I should note that the building was renovated hmm, maybe 10 years ago, maybe a little bit more, under a village grant and uh, the entire facade was changed and brought up to standards that you see now. Uh, the use is permitted in the district uh, with a special use and um, certainly based on the operations we have no concern about it. The, as was presented, there is a parking deficit, it's a technical deficit. Uh, it was built, the building was built before 1965, so the parking is grandfathered at a lower rate than currently is uh, required. So um, there would be a um, deficit of uh, six spaces at the site. But uh, again, oh, there's numerous uses just like this throughout Dempster and Main Street that have to be allowed or the buildings would not be functional. Uh, also, as O'Reilly has agreed to allow them to use their parking along the building, along the west side, we support that also. Uh, the report that you saw said 10 spaces, there's only eight spaces so that would be the maximum that they could use so staff is recommending approval okay any questions of the staff commissioner berman two questions it, it seems like the petitioner is a very fine fellow with a fine tattoo parlor and the parking needs are being met partly by the o'reilly agreement when we give permission if we give permission for this tattoo parlor does that then extend to future tattoo parlors at this site if and when this owner sells to another one or does that subsequent tattoo parlor have to come back to us for additional permission again convincing us of how what a quality person they are and what a quality operation they're going to run and uh, their parking agreement again with O'Reilly um, to tell you the truth I can't remember if that condition is in here but you can put a condition in there saying that it's based on the specific operation and if there's any change in the ownership of the business that they would have to come back to the plan commission and village board for approval or in the parking um, agreement with O'Reilly yes well could well, you state that that yeah. this special permit would cease once this once the petitioner leaves the uh, business that that could be done also that could be Cause, easier just because yeah. we often see changes in certificates of uses right uh, for a special use that's been granted provided that you know, based on staff's review that they look the same but again I'm likening I'm likening this to a liquor license um, right. we we care greatly about not only the licensee corporation but also the license the officers of that corporation so any change in ownership not only of the parlor but also of the corporate um, the underlying corporation is a change in ownership yes. so we can put that, as a condition. that condition could be added okay well, you'll have your chance Okay. Any other questions of the uh, of staff? Okay. okay. Thank you, <coughs> Peter. Thank you. At this point, I'm going to ask if there are anybody in the audience who want to come up and question, have a question or a comment on this case, please come up. No. Okay, Councilor. Thank you. Uh, with respect to the suggested condition, um, I, I guess I want to just um, air it this way and they really haven't talked to my client about 
uh, about this. You know, he's a, so it's, a it's a small entity. Um, I don't know that he's got plans to uh, franchise or, or go off. But I think that your your code, as uh, pretty much every municipality, uh, structures the special use as um, an entitlement that is typically made um, uh, personal, if you will, to the entity that's applying. And so you already have regulations that control uh, how the special use transfers, if it transfers. And I just ask that we be subject to the same uh, regulations that are applicable to all special uses in, in your town under your, your regulations. I don't know that there's any need from our standpoint to um, uh, do anything more than has already been developed uh, by, you know, the, by your ordinances and general application of, okay. of the legal principles that are in, enshrined in your ordinance. Okay. Well, let me oh, ask Peter, would, 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 owners, would a shift of ownership, would that change the special use? It might and it might not. The special use is actually issued to the property owner uh -huh. on behalf of the tenant. So the tenant may change mm -hmm. and uh, the property owner would still have that special use. I, I think to protect ourselves, if that's what you're concerned about, well, we often have this with religious uh, uses or other uses. Where, where they operate in a specific manner which uh, we want to control so that there's no exterior or externalities from mm -hmm. that use. A, a good two-thirds of our discussion tonight from both council and from the owner have mm -hmm. been about the personality of mm -hmm. the owner and how we should admire and like him. And mm -hmm. it seems as though we are leaning, I'm leaning okay. in that well, direction. Well, let, me ask, let me ask this I'm, question. I'm, I'm, keep, I'm keeping it there for sure. personal. Okay. Is this a leased space or does he own it's, the space? It's leased. It's it a is leased, leased space, yes. Okay, so there you go. So the, the special use does go to the property owner. Right. Okay. Okay. And not, not to the entity. But we have. But we have. Okay. As soon as I'll be ready to make my motion. Okay. To okay. So as long as we have that clear. Okay. Okay. Very good. <coughs> Anything else? Uh, no. Okay, I think, good. I think well, I'm, thank I'm you. done. Thank you. Okay, I am on the motion. I need a motion for case 2018-40P special use permit at 4916 Depths. I, I've asked if anybody in the audience. No, no one came up. I didn't hear them. Yeah. Okay. Paul, would, I I will move to accept, but I'm asking you, you if you'd prefer if we make an amendment first that we then vote on, or if you'd like me to put the condition as part of you my motion. You have put the condition in the motion, you have need a second. So then, then not, a, not a separate amendment? No. Then I move to um, approve as presented with the condition that this be personal to this owner and this corporate officer of this corporation. The special so that, use permit. The special use permit, so that even um, upon a sale of the corporation, that special use permit will extinguish because it is personal to this particular corporate officer of this corporation. Second? Okay. Okay. Get that, Pete? Yeah. Uh, well, just a question. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's that they go through the entire public hearing process if they want to change or it could go in for modified review. I mean, overall, the, the operational will still be the same. It's just the operator that you're concerned primarily. That's right. I think it has to go to the whole public hearing process, okay. the same as this one was, so that the next one can convince us of the credibility of that operator. <laughs> so if owner-operator. Well, I'm talking about underlying corporate officer, because right now it's a corporation. OK. Got it. All right. Call for the vote. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Aye. Commissioner Quaint. Aye. Commissioner Scott Berman. Aye. Commissioner Villages. Aye. Commissioner Paradise. Aye. Commissioner Lexpati. Aye. Commissioner Jeff Berman. Aye. Commissioner Matei. Aye. And I'll vote aye. Congratulations. Aye. Welcome to Skokie. Uh, for now, uh, again, you, this case still has to go before the Board of Trustees for final approval. And uh, you'll all be notified if you're interested. Uh, again, give us your name and address. We'll send you a notification. And when this case will go before the board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next case tonight is case 2018-41P, special use permit for 4658 Oakton Street. The Harai Community Service Center requests a special use permit 
for child daycare, uh -huh. not I'll, in a residence, in a CX core mixed use zoning district. Is the petitioner here tonight? Did I pronounce that right? Is, it, is that Hirai? Mm -hmm. Problem from the beginning. Mr. Chairman, yes. board member, good evening, everyone. My name is Angel Kendo, and I'm the executive director of Orhei Community Service Center. And I'm here tonight to uh, present to you a very needed subject that okay. I think. Can we have an address for you? Can you hear me? Can we have an address for you? The address? Your address. Your personal address. Oh. Um, 20, we are at 2965, but what I'm looking for is, what I'm doing here is the address. Ma'am, ma'am, ma please, before you start, could you raise your right hand? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you affirm that the testimony you give tonight is the truth, the whole truth, not about the truth to help you? I do. Yes. Counselor, is the notice in order? No, this is proper and correct. Thank you. Okay, if you, you can please continue. Okay. I am here to present to you uh, my request for establishing um, a child daycare at our location, 4658 Oakton Street. Um, as Orhei Community Service Center, we've been, you know, uh, established since 2001, and we've been doing social service agency at Chicago District. Uh, two years ago, we found a beautiful location in uh, Skokie and we were very much interested to, to buy that place, and we did. We, we were thinking to do it as an office location, but then um, since we have a main office in uh, Chicago, we decided to start a child daycare in Skokie. The, the reason that um, made us, I mean, first of all, we, uh, we like Skokie, this <laughs> is no doubt. And we found that the location is very crucial and very much um, uh, just in the heart of Skokie uh, downtown. And I know somebody would say there are many um, child daycare in Skokie. As a matter of fact, there is one just facing us. Um, and sometimes you would say, oh, this is not a good choice. But we found it a good choice because um, what pushed us to do that was learning from each other and sometimes the competition make the things more beautiful. If you don't compete, then you don't <coughs> improve. Um, the other way is, I mean, being a Syrian, you know, we have an Assyrian community a lot in Skokie, which is maybe the second community uh, looking at the population wise. Um, that doesn't mean that the location will be only for Assyrian kids, but because of the lot of families um, that live in um, Skokie and moving from Chicago to Skokie, they come just refugee and immigrant live in Chicago for one year and then they say, oh, we have to move to Skokie. It's more beautiful, it's more safe. So these are the reasons that really pushed us to start a, a daycare for children. Um, the other thing, we, uh, we made just a study and found out that there is a lot of young families, the percentage of young families that they're gonna be, create a family and then have children is increasing. So we've, we would love very much to start this um, daycare, and I'm looking forward to your acceptance, and I'm ready to have any question if you have. Okay. Well, what is your experience in operating a daycare center? I did run a daycare years ago with another agency for six years. Okay. Any questions to the petitioner? You, Thanks, Russ. You mentioned that um, there is a 
facility across the street facing this yes sir is, is that yes. Montessori yes and and uh, are, they, are they they're more than just daycare are they not they're yeah uh, kindergarten or it's a it's a, this school yeah yeah so they're different well you'll be pre-k right preschool it's like a daycare, child daycare for children from two years to five years. It's gotcha. almost the same, but there is a little different. Like yeah, I talked to the owner of yeah. that daycare, and um, we became friends, which is good. And um, you know, they have more program. We will just concentrate on children from two to f uh, five years old. Okay. Any other questions, Commissioner Mate? How yes. many uh, children would you typically have? I couldn't hear you, I'm sorry. How many children will oh, we have? The capacity in is about um, 40 to 45. Okay. And how many employees do you plan on having? How many? Em employees. Staff. Staff. Oh, employee, you know, for each, uh, since the age is two to um, five, then for every eight, we will have a supervisor or a teacher. Okay. And do you have the of course we're going to have a director separate from the teachers and also uh, somebody to for cleaning you know the full staff yeah and you have state certification the in process excuse me do you have a state certification um not what? yet not, not yet, yet. Okay, this applied? is the beginning i mean if everything goes okay then we have a lot of work to do according to the rules and regulations required and then we will look for the other, you know, the CFS uh, and state uh, license. But that's pending your kind of approval. Okay. So do you intend this to be a for-profit or not-for-profit organization? I, I notice you our, come from a not-for-profit. Our organization is non-profit, but doing a business then, I mean, now we're paying taxes. It's vacant and we have it for two years as a matter of fact. But we don't want to sell it because it's a good location and it's very proper for the child daycare. And doing business as ch uh, child daycare, we have to pay taxes, even though we are nonprofit. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Do you have anything else to present to say? Or? Not really. If okay. You don't then at have this time, you know, if you would sit down, I'll have the staff give us thank you. give us a report. Commission, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I ask that the uh, report be accepted into record as written. The request was granted. Okay, thank you. Uh, the uh, report was written by Carrie Haberstitch and uh, was reviewed by all the departments in the village and we recommend approval based on the positive findings of fact and the recommended conditions. Uh, based on the plan that was submitted, it meets all requirements and uh, I know there was a questions about how many students and how many teachers. The uh, parking requirement for daycare centers is really based on square footage. So uh, uh, six uh, parking spaces are required and uh, five or five were required and six are provided, so it does meet the parking requirement. The question is usually on how uh, pickup and drop off occurs, and so there is currently a drop off zone on Kilpatrick along here, <coughs> which would have to be shared with the Bojani daycare on the other side of the street, also. And also, they could use the parking lot to uh, park and drop off children. And in the most extreme case, it would be Oakton Street. Uh, there's parking along Oakton that could be used, but that's not encouraged by staff. Mm -hmm. okay. Any questions of staff on the application? Yeah, I'm that. sorry, Commissioner Jeff Berman. Peter, I, I, I'm not certain if, in terms of issuing it with the requirements um, under governance, does that include obtaining 
the appropriate licenses by the state to operate a child daycare facility? Yes, we do not issue the certificate of occupancy until PCFS has approved the operation and everything is set up. Well, where does that fall? Is that under uh, 31, the petitioner shall comply with all federal and state statutes, laws, rules, and regulations and all village codes? Is that relative to that, the operation or the facility? It's uh, to the operation, yes. Okay, thank you. Following up on that question, the question about the facility, it looks like an awful lot of use in a very small space, 40 by 45 feet. Mm -hmm. um, did Carrie and draw in a moving it this far to us already find that this square footage accommodates 45 students? Well, that, again, will be a final decision by DCFS uh, based on the staffing. They look at the staffing and the student ratio based on the age of the children that are there. So if they're smaller, higher intensity, older, less intensity of uh, you know student to child ratio. My question is more square footage. Are we approving tonight, if we approve this, the square footage as presented to us and the plan that was presented? Yes. Yes, you are. Because I mean, this plan is, is one that would accommodate 45 students and appropriate staff for the state code? It, it meets our code. And then, again, it'll have to be submitted to the state. And the state will look at the actual ratio of student to teacher. Our code only requires a certain number of parking spaces per square foot, which is not related to the state code of teacher to student ratio. So, so one more question. So we have no, nothing in our code concerning square footage of usage in a daycare center for how many students can occupy that space? At one time we did. Yes, sir. But we've taken that out and we've gone strictly by square footage because each age group has a different teacher ratio. So we don't know, you know, until- and that could change, that in. changes every so, year. And so when they get licensed by the state, it will specifically state, uh, you know, the age groups and who was in that building. So my last question is, then this plan that is presented to us tonight does meet our code for square footage? Yes, it does. Okay. Mr. Quinn? Just a thought is, um, with the maximum number of, of uh, students and staff that the petitioner has mentioned, is that related in any way to fire code based on square footage? How many bodies can be in a room of 40 by 40? Well, that would be looked at also, but uh, it does not appear to be an issue. Uh, the fire department has looked at it, and their recommendations are more the standard ones about alarming and different things that are required in order for the safety of the students. Again, it comes back to DCFS to actually determine the ratio of students they may be actually reduced from what they're stating. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, thank you, Peter. Thank you. At this time, is there anyone in the audience who have a question or comment on this case? None? You want to? There is one. Please, comment, question, opinion. Yeah, please give us your name and address when you come up. All right. Do you want my name and address? Yes. Okay. Name is uh, Sana Bojani. Uh, home address is 8800 Kildare Avenue, Skokie, Illinois. Thank you. I'm Nurjan Bojani. My address is 8800 Kildare Avenue. Okay. Skokie. So I guess they're just uh, within hearing all the questions we just want to clarify. So we do own the Mosaic Montessori across the street. Mm -hmm. Um a few things so our center goes from six weeks to six years so we start from infants and we go all, i have a, a, quite a few kindergartners right now um and then with regards to how dcfs approves how many kids are going to be in there so every age group has a different square footage that dcfs allows so if you've got an infant how many square feet 55, is that 55 55 square feet per infant 35 for two. 35 for two-year-olds, and then actually infants have more uh, additional requirements because they've got cribs plus the play area. That's two separate things for DCFS. Um, so those were, those were the two things we wanted to clarify. Um, so it's not by ratio. It's automatically four to one ratio for infants, maximum of 12, automatically uh, five to one for toddlers, automatically to, uh, eight to one for two-year-olds. Three and up will be uh, 10 to one. 
ki. I know Skokie lacks daycare, and there are so many daycares, and we are here from like last. I did the home daycare for 20, 10 years in Skokie, and then I opened the first center on Dempster, and then I have a three location in Skokie. And uh, the way I was taking to my neighbors, and uh, I went to her place, and we were in process to buying, and then for we couldn't buy that place because that time I, my daughter, you know, diagnosed from cancer, and we got busy as a family. And uh, then I was ready to buy, and then now she wants to open the daycare. And only because she was telling me there are waiting lists in the Skokie, I want to make sure you know there is no waiting list in Skokie. Mm -hmm. It's very, very hard to survive right now for us with that three location. So that's I want to tell you, you people are giving all those permission to open so many daycare centers in Skokie, like you one opening on a dumpster right now, and other people like us, business is going down. And maybe we have to close down that. So be careful. I'm not saying not to give anybody because I'm not that kind of person. I like to share, but I want to make sure. Yes, I can expand because I'm coming with the experience. Okay, and I told her that we I'm ready to expand the business because it's next door to me and uh, because I'm doing this from almost 40 years, 79, I start doing the business. But um, if uh, only I want to let you know about the Skokie situation in daycare center, there are not any daycare full. You can go and ask any daycare, call any daycare. Everybody have opening and everybody is waiting children. And every teachers are going out of job because of this situation, because everybody is opening daycare. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience? Comment, question? Okay, would you please come back up? I, I have one question for Peter while, while the yes. petitioner is coming back. My question for Peter is, we have no ability in the plan commission nor the trustees to prevent a business from opening for, for competitive reasons. Is that correct? No. Um, at one time, we had a rule about spacing of fast food restaurants, and that was determined that would be an unconstitutional thing to do. Uh, at one point, the findings of fact included uh, a review of other day, uh, not daycares, but other special uses in the area. And that, again, was a problem because it, each one is on an individual basis that you review. And if you find that there's a negative uh, impact, then it shouldn't be approved. Not, you know, there's, I don't, I don't think there's, there's going to be a cumulative effect as the condition once was, and so it was removed from the findings. So basically, no, there's no, no restriction Staff looks at each one on an individual basis, and uh, you know, I'm sorry if it does affect the Bojanis. I mean, I've known them for since '79, and uh, they're wonderful people. But um, you know, it's uh, it's a competitive business like any other. And, and the village is not in the business of you know asking people to open up specific businesses. That's right. Either. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a question. Sure. Sorry, Commissioner Berman. And I suppose I'm asking the same thing, but in a different way. Is you know we talk periodically about different plans that have been done in the village in terms of, and say this meets our, the plan or this doesn't meet the plan. A comprehensive is, plan. Yeah, comprehensive plan. Has there been any look at whether or not it's positive or or what what's what's too many of any one business like this in within a community? Well, we we have had a market study, and there are types of uses that we would like to attract. Um, I don't think that uh, daycare is a you know high on the list. We do have a lot of them. Um, Swift Daycare, for instance, I think has two or three has three of them downtown, and so and all of them are you know thriving uses. So I, it's hard to say what's enough and where they should be or where they shouldn't be. It's the free marketplace that wants that. Okay. Okay. So you. You've heard the staff comments. You've heard, you know, the people speaking. I can't hear you, sir. Do, you, do you have any problems? Have you read the uh, staff report? Well, no, I just want to uh, just say something about you what can, the lady yes, said. Yes, you can. I mean, uh, opening a business. I mean, you go and there is a restaurant here and there is a restaurant here and people are coming just in between small space 
and they're successful, all of them. So we shouldn't, um, we shouldn't think that if somebody open a business, then my business will go away. No, it doesn't, it's not that. I mean, Skokie, um, I was just looking at the computer and, and you know, uh, checking the population of Skokie. People who are from age 25, let's say, to 44, it's very good percentage. These people will be all building families in, in, in two, three years and they will have children. So one daycare cannot accommodate all the little kids in um, Skokie. And it doesn't mean that we open, then we will break. I didn't mean that. And I said earlier, competition is very beautiful, but it doesn't mean that we have to become enemy, we have to become friends and help each other to do the best for the children and the families who are working and trying very hard to make a good life for their kids. When parents are in school, you know, they have to have a peace of mind, the same that she has been doing, excellent job, you know, taking care of the kids of the parents working, and that's what we're gonna do. Okay, very good. It's but not all of My them. question Thank is, you. have you read the staff report, and do you agree with anything in the, you know, do you agree to the staff report, or do you disagree to the, anything in the staff report? Say that again. I, in, the, in, the, in the staff report that you received, there's yeah. a list of recommended conditions. Can you meet all those conditions? Well, maybe. Well, which ones can't you meet? <laughs> I mean, can, I, can I explain? Carrie has been talking to the petitioners and to yes. the architect, and they do agree to everything, and they will have revised plans uh, presented for the village board. We have your name, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening uh, to the board. My name is Dimitrios Tavares, and I'm the architect for the project. Oh, uh, you raise your hand, and do you affirm the testimony you give tonight is truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you? Thank you. I live in 1303 South Chestnut. I read the uh, recommendations of the staff report, and I agree with them 100%. We will fully comply with all the requirements that the city of Skokie wants in order to allow this facility to go on. Okay, very good. That's all you need to know. Thank That's you. all I need to hear. Thank you. Okay. On uh, case 2018-41P, special use permit for daycare center 4658 Oakton, do I have a motion? Yes. Oh, Commissioner Berman? Okay. Oh, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay. Motion to approve. You motion to approve. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Commissioner uh, Scott Berman. Okay, call for the vote. Commissioner Mitchell? Aye. Commissioner Quain? Aye. Commissioner Scott Berman? Aye. Commissioner Villages? Aye. Commissioner Paradise? Aye. Commissioner Lexpati? Aye. Commissioner Scott Berman? No. Jeff Berman? Aye. Commissioner Mate? Aye. And I'll vote aye. Thank you. Uh, my apologies to the Bermans. Um, okay, again, this case will need to go before the Board of Trustees for final approval. Again, if you want a copy of this report, or if you want to be notified when this case will go before the board, please give us your name and address, and we will see that you're notified. Um, okay, thank you for coming tonight. And uh, before this meeting is adjourned, uh, Commissioner Paradise would like the floor. Commissioner Paradise? Do I have an audience out there? You can have an audience. <clears throat> Tonight is going to be the last night that I serve on the plan commission. Oh, no. I've served for 44 years. I wanted to say goodbye to everybody who has been courteous, friendly, and taught me a lot. Even when I sat in this chair that our leader does. So briefly, I want to say what I wrote and because my memory is a little faulty. I'm approaching my 99th year and I leave you with these words. I have found all of you to be gracious, gentlemen and ladies and ladies.
This town of my residence therein means a lot to me. Beyond the 44 years, I raised three sons, a wife. I came here when the population was 20, 12,000. And now it's bucking, I imagine, about 75,000. So you can imagine what I've seen and weathered. But one thing has been an indelible matter to me, and that is my presiding and learning time in this building and meeting interesting and able people who taught me a lot, and I appreciate every bit that I had the opportunity to learn. I wish you all Godspeed. Good night. Thank you. Commissioner Paradise, may I say that it was, it was my honor to serve under you when you were chairman, and it is my honor that you serve with me as commissioner, and we wish you good luck and Godspeed. My eyes are tearing. With that, this meeting is adjourned.